stem glass with the label on it, and they're not got a stemless. I don't think it's weird at all. Okay. They can't even see it. I mean, they kind of can, but we're because of the. Promoting. I am recording, by the way. Oh. You can't even. I haven't even fixed my hair yet. Where's the label? You can't see the label on the. I haven't even fixed my hair yet. It's all over the place. You're I just okay. sat down. You're okay. No, I look like a whole mess. No, you're not. You look beautiful. Okay. You look extremely beautiful. <sighs> That was a perfect transition so that they could come back and not the way that you're looking at me. They're like, what the hell just happened? So I did confirm it on the other video that when it does transition, that it does mute our mics. So that's good. Good job. That means we'll never end up like those movie stars or people. What was that movie that we watched that? Oh, it was in the show too. That Kenny Pop Was it Eastbound Down? Yeah. Hot mic. When your mic is on and everybody can hear it. Remember, that's how the dude got in trouble in the final season on the sports talk show. I don't know, but he's making me drink wine for this episode, just to be clear. So I'm going to get a little mimosa. This is going to be a bonus episode. And the way... So, listen, hear me out, okay? I have the ability to remove filler words and dead air. So I can make this an accelerated episode. There are people out there, not me, the Can kids. You stop accelerating in the bedroom and slow down. <laughs> Is there a reverse button? Yes. Okay. There, there are people that listen and watch content at like 1.5, 2x speed. Mm -hmm. Remember, I've done it to the kid. That's how I found out about it. I found out that people did that. Mm -hmm. And I have, when I was working on that, that other show that, it wasn't my show. I just worked on it. The, mm -hmm. the show that failed, I would listen at 2x speed so that I could do my notes and annotations and stuff faster to burn through the stuff that doesn't really matter because you only have to catch so much. So I wanted to, I want to experiment. I'm going to run it through. I'm going to have it remove all the filler words. I'm going to have it remove all the dead air. Maybe I'll have it put a smile on your face too the entire time. There's an eye contact setting. It's creepy though, because I could be looking at you and it would automatically move my eyeballs. That's so creepy. <laughs> no, thank you. It even, it opens your eyelids and everything. It alters your face. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. But, so this is a, for the audio audience, I just revealed her boobs. I did actually. See, I told you I was going to take off the overlay just for part of it. We'll right. see. Adjusting. I'm adjusting you. There we go. We've got a little Chianti and you've got some weird hybrid mixture of San Pellegrino and you know, Grigio. No, no, it's Something Riesling on because Riesling? Oh, that's what you bought. Okay. I don't buy Riesling. But I bought Riesling because I knew you probably bought Sauvignon Blanc yes. and I figured we needed a variety for the people that wanted to drink this one of them. leftover else. from my child's birthday party, by the way, because okay. obviously she, we need to cater to the adults. She says child's birthday party, but there was a second party going on, a pasta party, meatball. No, the whole mm. thing was a pasta party. Balls. It was a meatball party. Balls. Meatball and eclair party. Balls. Yes, I love balls. balls I know you do. In and around your mouth, on your forehead, no. slapping your butt cheeks. <laughs> okay. I am trying so hard not to snort into this mic. It, it should cut that out. It should cut out. Your balls don't slap anything. Okay. You say so. You're saying I'm not old enough for them to sag enough for it to... No, because you have a little pee-pee. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Small pee-pee. You can't say little pee-pee. You have to say small. Small. S-M-O-L. -S so small. Is there an L or is there an E on small? I don't know. The way that you spell it is S-M-O-L. Yeah, I don't know if it's S M O L or S M O L E. Somebody but tell us. No normal person spells it that way. The internet people do. Okay. Trolls like you? No. Regular internet people. People that grew up with the internet. Yeah, not me then. I grew up with nothing. You don't know leet speak either. I don't know what that is. Literally the number was it one three three seven? What is that? It's 
L E T upside down back like boobies on a calculator. Same kind of thing. You did that in school. You never typed out in your class. Nobody in your entire school ever typed out. I can't say about other people, but I didn't. Was I don't it know what you're talking about. 8008813S or 5? So S, yeah. Boobies. What? This is news to me. This, I'm sure this exa I'm not saying it does. The, the Wilmington, North Carolina education system failed you. No. Failed you. You never learned As about you've boobies. you said, I'm uncultured. You never learned about... How? Every, everyone. You have to be the only person on planet Earth that never did that. I don't even under... What? Did, uh, do any of the kids have a calculator? Yeah. TI-84 plus or 84 Oh, yeah. Plus I remember we had a, uh, a target. Three hundred dollars for a damn. It's not three hundred dollars, and I ordered off Amazon. But we we'll, we'll, oh, because they didn't have it at Target that day mm -hmm. that we were there. That's right. Because I had literally just given away mine from my years in school a year prior, not even thinking about it, mm -hmm. and got me through eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. I had a tangent and an analogy for it, but. You know, these days, so Wolfram Alpha, did you ever use that in school or in college or anything? A what? Wolfram Alpha. It was, or is, I've seen it. I don't know what all they do anymore, but have you ever put like a calculation into Google search? You're asking like, what is this plus this divided by mm, this? No. Okay. Well, they used to be powered by Wolfram Alpha, but Wolfram Alpha was a site where you could go and put in any equation in any math problem. And it would walk you through the steps on how to solve it, giving you all of the steps as well. So if you had to show your work, it's an easy way to cheat on math homework. I've never heard about that. Yeah. Very useful resource for... Does it do the stupid people math? That Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it does calculus and geometry. I'm sure it does everything. I like can't even help my kids in school anymore. Because the way that they have to show their work is completely different than how I know to do it. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Put this box over here on the left-hand side of your page and, you know, fill in this corner over here to do 2 plus 2. Like, what? How does that make any sense? 2 plus 2 is 4. You voted for it. Not you. We voted for this change. But we were talking in the kitchen one of the... Or maybe, do we talk about it on the show too? About how I think that we are in some ways trying to get more competitive with our education with these early college high schools becoming more prevalent and actually earning a degree from it. You must have had this conversation with your other wife and not me. No, we had it in the kitchen. So maybe it wasn't, maybe you were on the couch already with your friends. I don't know. Maybe I talked about it on the podcast and we're both forgetting. Neither here nor there, but it is kind of here. And it's upcoming. In in some ways, I think that over time, that maybe that's the logical transition. We've already diminished the value of a college degree anyways. Why don't we... I did half days, college courses, my junior and senior year of high school. They had other things like building trades and auto trades where you go and you build a house. You work on cars. And you get those certificates before you ever graduate. So for trades, it's good. It's also good for accelerating your education, minimizing your student loan debt over time, giving you the ability to earn a postgraduate degree with less debt and potential earning power. Cooper graduates with an associate's degree He's not going to find the highest paying job, but he can move on to his real college coursework for his bachelor's and beyond and have something that will give him the ability to get his foot in the door with a job, making more than he would flipping burgers. Potentially. Yeah. So it makes us more competitive in the international space as well. Having a younger generation of higher educated people. This is my theory. My theory. You have all of these other countries that want to do foreign exchange programs in the U.S. Come to our high schools, come to our colleges, 
Some is for the experience, but a lot of them want to go to MIT and Caltech and Harvard and Michigan and wherever else for engineering degrees or all these different science degrees, technology, mathematics, things like that. How many times have you ever heard somebody wanting to go to China to go for a foreign exchange program other than maybe like my neighbor probably would have done it like a Chinese immigrant family member that wants to go back and maybe live with their extended family and go to school there, experience the culture that they came from, and then they come back and finish out everything here. Outside of that, when's the last time that you heard of somebody going to Hong Kong technical school or Japanese warfare academy? I'm, I'm making stuff up. But when's the last time that you... Never, right? Have you ever heard of that? Never. Exactly. But we have thousands, millions of people applying for visas to come work for our companies because they want to earn a living and they want the American dream or what they think is the American dream. And you also have malicious intent where they're coming here to steal trade secrets and things like that. You don't ever see a kid saying, I want to go to college in Zimbabwe. They might go to a school in Europe. They might go to a school even in Canada. There's a couple, I don't know anything about them, but I know a couple names of schools in Canada. I dated a girl that went to Canada. I dated a girl that went to... Oh yeah, let's talk about that. I went to, that went to Great Britain. Okay, talk about what? All the girls that you dated. Why? Let's unpack that. When I was in Korea, a girl that I dated went to Toronto to there's a women's school i believe it starts was with an she m korean yeah korean not one of she was actually a korean national i met her family they all live there she was actually korean not a filipino juicy girl as they're called those are the human trafficking prostitutes that are there that have their passports taken away that the soldiers typically interact with what yeah those are called juicy girls or were i don't know if why juicy? I eat... Is it an acronym? Is it because they're tasty? Or juicy. So I'm assuming, I've never considered looking back at the history of the terminology, but they're employed by the different bars and clubs that are right outside of the gates for U.S. military installations. So in order to buy their time, you actually buy their drink. They will get a watered down version of what you could order one for one. You could order a beer and then a beer for her. And her beer is probably either not going to be beer or watered down beer because she's got a full eight, 10, 12 hour shift of manipulating guys into buying her drinks. Whereas you want to get the soldier to spend as much money as possible and get him out of there. How many girls per club would you say were working? I avoided most of that. I don't believe that for a second. I did. You can, I instead spent my time with the. How much did they cost? I don't remember. It wasn't, exp it, you're buying the drink. So whatever the drink cost. So just the drink to have them for X amount of hours? You're talking like a drink for 15 to 30 minutes, I think is what I remember. And what do you get in 15 to 30 minutes you behind the door? No, you sit at the booth. They weren't allowed to do that kind of stuff while they're working. Their life is controlled by whoever's trafficking them and bar, club, owner, whatever. So their extracurricular activities happened off the clock. Wait, if they're only working in the bar or club and they're essentially just a bonus to your drink and providing conversation they almost sound like a beer girl like those miller light girls that would come out to the clubs and promote like except those girls and i, know, I understand they're choosing to do it it's a little bit different but if they're never actually leaving the club and they're just essentially conversation and not actual sexually interacting those girls are paid for their time whether or not you want to consider it to be exactly this, like they're paid by miller light or bud light or budweiser anheuser-busch or miller coors or 
whatever the promotional organization in your specific no, no, no. state. I, I, just to be clear, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but if they're never actually leaving the club and they're just providing conversation and an added human to interact with lonely humans. These girls, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them, are trying to do one of two or three things. One is they want to send money back home. Two, they want to become a dependent of a U.S. service member so that they can get green card and then move to the States, potentially down the line, move their family to the United States. Sometimes they're doing it just because they're prostitutes and they want to just have sex and make money. But they're there for a completely different purpose than the Miller and Coors girls. The Miller and Coors girls are some promoter found them, said, hey, you look good. I can pay you 200 bucks to come stand and look pretty at this event. Smile and stand there, maybe serve some people. Versus the Juicy Girls, they made the decision to leave their home country. Yeah, they're being held hostage, but they didn't know that when they left. Because their passports, their IDs, all that stuff is taken from them. So they can't by leave who? by whoever facilitated their transport into the country. and Or the bar owner. Because typically they live like above. You know how like we have like the shopping centers with the apartments above? It's like that. So you have the bar, club, restaurant, whatever is on the first floor. And then above is like those live on top of each other bunk bed type rooms that they all live in together. And they're there for whatever period of time. So when you get to a lot of these Oconus outside the continental U.S. duty stations that the U.S. military has, there's a lot that they tell you, including this information. And, of course, you still have soldiers that still fall in love or still want to get married or they want to move out of the barracks so they want to do a contract marriage, whatever the case might be. And you have to go through counseling sessions. You have to do this. You have to do that. Do you actually love them? Are you being manipulated? Why are you actually doing this? There's usually a waiting or holding period before anything can transpire your commander and there's a lot of red tape that goes into it. They try, they're not very successful, but they try to make sure that you're not going into this and being manipulated and you're not gonna be taken for a fool, not taken hostage, but there are still idiots. Maybe they are actually attracted to these people. Sometimes I'm sure they are, but you gotta remember, they still have to fulfill whatever obligation they have to the people that brought them there. You might like this girl, you might want to marry her, but she's still going to be prostituted out while you're doing your job in the army. So she, you might walk into her place of employment and she's sitting on somebody else's lap because they paid for her time and they're still dumb enough to do it. There's only so much you can do to intervene in somebody's life before it consumes entirely too much of your time. Juicy Girls, you're asking about the definition. Understand. Well, we were talking about uh, Korean girlfriend and... American girlfriend. So the one that went to the UK, she was, her family was Haitian or is Haitian. I don't know. So she did study abroad in somewhere in Great Britain, UK, London. It's all the same thing to me. As she, so why did you side out the camera? So like you're making, you're looking at me, but you side out the camera instead of looking at the camera and side. <laughs> so this all derailed from talking about education. And how I think that, and I've made it clear that for the most part, I look at when teachers are saying that they want more pay yeah. and you have, let's say elementary school specifically, you said this, your words, they're just there to keep them alive. So they're a glorified babysitter. They're there to tell them when they can that eat. That's not the only thing that I said. I, I, I know. Said, unfortunately, often they are put in that position. But. My opinion is that for those lower echelons of education, that no, because effectively they are just daycare. Now, you get up to somebody that actually has a master's or a doctorate and they're actually teaching a subject and they're a subject matter expert in high school, for example, yeah. And they also have the degree and credentials to back it up. 
they're not going to go and teach at a school if they can go and use that exact same degree in the corporate world and make two, three, ten times more money. Or they finish out their time in the corporate world and then they go back into education because they're effectively retired, but they want to do something with their time. I don't think teachers in lower education should become rich. Living wages, sure. What that number is, I don't know. Because it's an ever-changing number. She doesn't agree with me. That's what this look is. What's your opinion? How much money do you think a fourth grade teacher should make? Fourth grade, standardized tests. Are you, are you saying that they should be evaluated based on their classes scores? Is that what? Okay. No, I'm just going down the list of what's happening in fourth grade. Several subjects that you need to be extremely knowledgeable on to get them to the middle school. Era. Are they knowledgeable or are they parroting a book? No, you, you as a fourth grade teacher should be knowledgeable. At that level, you really think... Because they know they're not necessarily going to be... be able to answer questions on the fly to assist your children in becoming more... Why are you... Nothing. So this is an is versus ought argument. What it is, I believe, is not that. What it ought to be, yes, I agree with you. They should be knowledgeable. They should be well-educated and well-versed in the subject. But I am not convinced that they are, so... Had the camera on the wrong view. I had it on you while I was talking. I think that teachers are a lot more educated than you're giving them credit for. And there are several more that have master's degrees than you would like to state. I don't know the numbers, so it's not that I would like to state it or not. It's that from what I have seen, overwhelmingly, they aren't. And having a degree in teaching specifically teaches you how to teach. It doesn't teach you the comprehensive nuances of the subjects that you're teaching. So you might have a bachelor's or a master's degree in education, but that doesn't mean that you are the subject matter expert in pre-calculus. It just means that you're good at teaching. And those people get put in charge of teaching pre-calculus. I just neither of us really have the facts. I mean, you have more intimate knowledge with one specific school, but neither of us know. I don't even know, is it possible for us to go? I, I would assume it should be. We should be able to FOIA any school district and ask for all every you know, all the public records of everybody within that school. We should be able to pull up every department head's education and credentials. We should be able to pull up every individual teacher's education and credentials, I would think, whether or not that's true. And yes, whether... but I also am a firm believer in not necessarily degrees being sure. the most useful in teaching. Sure, but it is an indicator for people that are not savvy or... It's an indicator that you went to school and you were able to take tests. But you're not. It's also an indicator to those outside of that industry. So, for example, right, let's say we'll use Cooper again as an example. Cooper goes to school and is taking all of these prerequisites for his degree program. And the teachers have a degree in that field. The expectation is they are the subject matter expert to an outsider. Specifically, somebody that doesn't have experience in engineering, tech, and IT. You're looking for the credentials. You're looking for the letters and acronyms that trail the name. You're looking for subsequent licensing, work history, experience, awards. So it's a piece. Whereas somebody that would look at me, I don't have formal education in the IT space. I'm licensed and certified in several different things, but somebody will look down on that, that I'm not the expert in my field because I didn't go through formal, I went through formal education for something else. So if I walked around and told people I have a nursing degree and business management minor and philosophy minor, they're gonna be like, that doesn't apply to web development and IT. But my experience, my portfolio, 
my ability to do the things that people ask is what proves that I'm the expert in my field. Being able to swoop in and rescue people from somebody else that didn't know goes a long way. In the education system, you don't have an alternative. If you have a bad teacher, professor, or somebody that doesn't necessarily know the curriculum that they're supposed to be teaching, they're just going to be parroting what's in the material, pointing you towards things that are online, videos, whatever's provided. Some students, they can learn everything that they need to that way. Some students need hands-on. Some students need to be able to criticize, think critically, ask the questions and not get pushback because that's a big problem. A lot of teachers don't want to be questioned. They want what they tell you to be fact. They've been looking at you this entire time. It sounds time. like you. No. I answer the questions. You guys just don't like the answers. Yeah. So what else do you think a fourth grade teacher should be expected? Is there a minimum threshold for education? Would you take a fourth grade teacher as a GED? Would you be okay with that for your children? By law, that's not allowed. Okay. But let's say that by law, it didn't matter. If they only had a GED, but had experience, would you be okay with the children? What is the experience specifically? I don't know. Well, I need specifics. Okay. Let's say specific teacher's parent is an author. So they've, they're well read. They have been but in what your parent does is not what you do. Right. But they have the experience. They have the support system to be knowledgeable in some ways that potentially others that might have gone through school for it don't necessarily have. Again, what your parent does is not what you do. Right. But I'm so it doesn't. So you would It's not acceptable it, to you. No. Okay. So then, what is acceptable? If they had been an assistant to a fourth or fifth grade teacher for X amount of years, and then give the give the number of years, give a minimum. Let's say at least five years, and had shown that like substitute teacher or no no no, no. was it teacher's aide? Is that what yeah, they called? Yeah, a TA. Okay. Which typically in fourth and fifth grade, you don't have a TA at that point. It's typically just K through three, which that's a budget thing. So are you saying that's in some ways, obviously not education wise, but in some ways is that essentially on the job training, job shadowing? What's essentially, the, yes. What's the other word for it? That Actually, the other word that I'm, that's escaping me right now is the original word that I wanted to say. Essentially, the only thing that they don't hold is a degree in teaching for the most part. Some do, of course. So a high school graduate, not GED, graduate, mm -hmm. who has, I, I know what I was going to say. It was in relation to doctors doing their residency. Okay, yeah. We can say it's the same. Okay. They've done countless hours. They're with the children. Having the experience, knowing the material, mm -hmm. yes, but not having the education in the field mm -hmm. is acceptable. Mm -hmm. When does that shift for you? At what grade slash age does it transition to be more important for them to have formal education and formal experience? High school, university. Freshman year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, okay. at that point, you need to be an expert matter in your subject. Subject matter expert? Sure. Expert matter in your subject? I'm going to make stickers sure. from... Miss, Wait, what did I say? Expert matter in your subject. That's what you said. Okay, I'm on my second. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you need to be an expert. So you can't be expert enough. No, at thirteen. I've been drinking my wine wrong. Is it this? I don't or, know. No, 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 I'm. Dude, I don't. Viewers. Know. I'm classy with a capital K, viewers. guys. Like viewers. I don't know. Between the middle and ring finger, or. Is it three and pinky up? Is that how they do it? Or do so, they hold the stem? So th this is how I drink. Is it stem and pinky up? I got to do the sniff. I've, I thought you said that pinkies were stupid. I do. I'm asking the viewers. Right. I don't, yeah. We need to have Tansy as a guest. Let's do that. Next time we 
are going to drink on an episode. Let's have, yeah, Eric, I'm going to text you later. I don't I'm know. Text him right now. See if he responds on air. I don't even know if he's recording right now, but he might. Just text him on Tuesday. Do you want to be a guest on our show? We have seven whole subscribers. Let's do. I'm gonna I'm gonna remix it with the. Let's do Shakespeare. Oh come on! If you guys have never used this before, and on Pixel devices using Google's text app, you can actually have it remix your text in various different. So I typed, "Do you want to be a guest on our show?" And I selected Shakespeare as for what it's changed to and said, Wouldst thou grace our humble gathering with thy esteemed presence as a guest? It's option number one. <laughs> Should I just text that to him and see what the fuck he says? Sent. He's, He's gonna, gonna be like, be like what, what are you smoking? I'll What's send him happening? I'll send him the clip after this is rendered out, so he'll be like, dude, what the fuck was that about? Why are you, are you having a stroke? That's what he's gonna ask. He's gonna Yes. I'm excited for his book to come out. When does it come out? Can't tell you. I'm not supposed to know. Or I, maybe I'm supposed to know, but I'm not supposed to tell people. I don't know. I do know, though. I don't know either. I do know. See, he does keep secrets from me, guys. It's But, okay, let's pretend that this was a secret. If I had told you and I didn't tell you not to say anything, you might have accidentally said it and we would have had to bleep it out. Who would I tell? The podcast. That's right. <laughs> I'm saying you might have said comes out on this date. So it's called Pig Latin. What do you think it's about? What do you think it's about? Well, he's a former cop in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I'm assuming pig is an innuendo towards his time in the police force for Latin. I don't think there's any true rhyme or reason for it. It's just because it was punny and pig Latin is just language. But it's only punny. If there's meaning behind it. I love punny humor. You already just dissected it. No, it's I because only dissected the first part. It's because as a cop, we effectively speak Latin. So it's police speak, police stories. It's his his stories from his time as an officer. Yeah, I want to dive into the Latin part. Okay. Eric, when you're our guest, you'll have to be dissected by Nona. No. That sounds really gross. Being dissected? Yes. Okay. So, are we done talking about education? Please. (laughs) Because I clearly lack it. You don't lack it. I'm I'm feeling very stupid. You have a different kind of education. Education? Yeah. You weren't learned the same way that I was. I used the wrong there all the way up until I was in nursing school. I remember working as a medic in the emergency department and asking one of the nurses for something, like which one was the correct one for something that I was writing. And they like, were trying Did to make fun of me. They you? They were, yeah, they were making fun of me about it. Oh, You and your little pee. <laughs> small, small pee. I'm using the wrong word. Little is too big. You have to say small. Small is bite size. Little is even smaller than small. I don't know. I think small is smaller than little. What do you guys think? That small is smaller than little? Nope. Yeah. You know I'm right. We passed that 32 minute mark that I said the other day. Uh, so we f- screwed that up again. What's happening in 32 minutes? Remember I said that our viewers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. No, we're not. You apparently leave us at 32 minutes. Oh, oh, oh. I was like. So it was nice knowing you guys yeah. for everybody who leaves us. For those of you who are staying. For those of you. Continue that, on for our education. For those that are, that, uh, blah, blah, blah. those of you that are staying, we have a special tool that allows us to show a different version of the video based on the amount of watch time. Okay. Let's which, be honest. Which, we all thought he was talking about a sex toy. Oh, no. So I have a special tool that can mm-hmm. show users a variation of the video based on time watched. Not scrubbing through the timeline, actual time watched. And how does that happen? I can't tell you. It's a special tool that I pay for. 
if they stick through the entire 60 minute episode at the end they'll see you flash the screen only on our only fans you are really trying hard to get my children kicked out of school aren't you no or they get kicked out of school for you having a podcast that happened to be also distributed on OnlyFans. That'd be a discrimination lawsuit waiting to happen. Because you're not doing porn. You're not a teacher. You don't work for them. Are they going to actually go and investigate every parent? Because if they do, there wouldn't be any kids in any school. I don't want to find out. I don't. Check out our OnlyFans. He's wrong. She's right. Dot com for all the videos and audio. Got special buttons down there that dynamically update along with the episode content. The audio, when it's uploaded. Yeah, see? I don't do anything manually while you're sitting there writing out blog posts. I'm having everything automated. I don't do anything on our website. Our website is fully automated, 100%. <clears throat> Why are you looking at my dick for? It's too little. Ah, small pee pee. He's wrong, she's right to see nudie pictures of Nona. <laughs> I'm sorry, nonaphelps.com to see nudie pictures of Nona. You have to know the secret code, though. When you visit the website, you have to look for it. If you view source, open your dev tools, you'll find it. There'll be a link in there. It's a hidden link. It's not visible to humans. You actually have to comb through all of the HTML and JavaScript and You're CSS. You're scare away all my clients. No, no. It's ambiguous right now. Does it exist or does it not? I'm never going to tell you. I know the answer. You know the answer. They don't know the answer is my point. Do you know the answer? You know the answer. So anyway. Uh, LeeMaxMedia.com, America's Technology Center of Excellence. What else? Veteran Wiki? Yes. Check out VeteranWiki.org. Yeah, donate. If you make a donation of $1,000 or more, we will send you something special. I'm going to leave it at that. Up to interpretation. And if you don't like what the special thing is, you can't get your donation back anyway, so who cares? And if you subscribe to us on YouTube by April 1st. 2% of our audience is subscribed. 53% of our audience is subscribed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to grow our reach and get that other 47%. So everybody start sharing on all of your social media platforms. I will say, though. We're in that aspect. Obviously, it's early days. In that aspect, we're doing better than most channels and podcasts. Typically, they're like 10% subscribed at this point. So that's a lot of YouTubers like to specifically point out those metrics, certain demographics saying get subscribed, that kind of stuff. And how effective it is, I don't know, but they keep doing it. So I'm assuming it must be effective to some degree. You're going to be, you're going to be my, the little avatar that's going to pop up right here in the, above the bar in your bikini and it's going to be, you're going to be going like this and it's going to be the subscribe button is going to pop up. You're not cool with that? No. Are you talking about the AI generated thing that you made? No, it has to be a video. I mean, I could probably generate a video as well, but. I don't want to get in a bikini on video. I don't okay. want anybody seeing me. Cool than your sexiest dress. You got to be clickbaity. We have to entice somebody's grandpa to subscribe. Ew. You already know that somebody, somewhere, somebody. No. Yeah. You know how on Valentine's Day or around Valentine's Day, women typically post the memes and images and things like that say, anybody that's ever jerked off to me, you owe me a Valentine's Day gift? No. I made a post this year that said anybody that's ever used my Lowe's discount owes me a Valentine's Day gift. Did Brett give you a Valentine's gift? No, but I think he responded. I think he saw it and responded. Maybe. I don't know. I never really talked to him. I never talked to any of those guys, really. Coincidentally, the buyer, buying agent, is from the same agency. But he didn't say anything. No. To be clear, Nona was in charge of selling my house on this third try. I did not limit anything other than basically a floor for price. I don't think I had any other stipulations, did I? I didn't say who you, we couldn't use. Yeah. And it moved. None of made it happen. Happy with the current agent. Julio, you can get a shout out since he's a Marine Corps veteran. If you're in the Wilmington area, Berkshire Hathaway, Julio Fuentes, hit him up. He moved it fast. That was really sweet of you. And we it's have like one of the nicest things you've oh, ever done no. for somebody you've met exactly one time yesterday when he dropped off the due diligence check. <laughs> 
It's because he gave me money. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know anything else about him. Yeah, we stood on the porch and talked for a couple minutes, but I don't know anything else about him. Aww. Aww. He's a little baby. I don't think he's going to like you saying that. No, he's a little baby. He was born in 98. Oh, really? So you met age. You were talking about his height. Oh, yeah. He's little, too. But, yeah, he's a little baby. Okay. Okay. He's so young. I'm going to close out this bonus episode with some stuff. Stuff. What kind of stuff? You like to associate everything with something. Like, you. it's impossible for you to disconnect from the media that you consume with your real life. There's always a connection made. There's always, you act like this person, that person. You being me or you being the proverbial? You self-identify with all media that we consume. Every actor, every scene, every has something, some aspect that you relate to the people and scenarios in your life. So let's run through characters from various shows I'm terrified. I'm going to go off ones that you say are me and are not me. And you're going to have to give one sentence. No other context. No because of this or that. Okay. It's. Okay. I hear you. You are someone. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Dwight Schrute from The Office. You are a stickler of all the rules. Jim Halpert from The Office. Rules do not apply here. So you're saying that. When the rules don't apply, I'm Jim. But when the rules do apply, I'm Dwight. No, you are not Jim. I am Jim. No, yeah. you're not. I am sweet and kind. No, you're not. Yes, I so, am. Th- I ran down all of the lists. You are not Jim in any way, shape, or form. Yes, I am. I even started to say because you impregnated somebody and I caught myself and <laughs> you've never even impregnated anybody. That we know of. They would have come to find you. Or maybe they didn't want to for the same reason that you hate me. <laughs> because you're Dwight. It's, it's no, nope, but somebody wanted Dwight to impregnate them, so... You're Dwight. You're not Jim. Okay, next. What's his last name? No. No? The rules don't apply. You're not Andy. Really? No, are you a privileged upper... You've said that because I grew I, up a different I way than you did. I said that we grew up completely different. I would not put you in Andy's classification of upper. No. Kevin Malone. No. No. You both love cookies. You're both cookie monster. That's it? That's it. No. Typically, you're like, oh, boobies. Boobies. I thought that was where you were going to go. I didn't think you were going to do cookies. But yeah. No. For him, I'm pretty sure the ranking is cookies and then boobies are down here. Okay. Parks and Rec. Okay. Ron Swanson. You both hate the government. Bacon. You both hate the government. Okay. Remember the episode when he threw his computer away? See, rather than throwing my computer away, I just fight back. <laughs> no, I don't remember that episode, actually. Andy Dwyer. Rules don't apply. Really? You tell people that if if you weren't around, that I would probably be dead because you take care of me, and that was kind of the premise of, like, the first two or three seasons, he fell into the pit and his girlfriend had to take care of him and he was lazy and didn't have a job and next i'm trying to think of another character that you use frequently okay so let's do some that i wish you had seen brooklyn and i really need to watch that it's it is just as funny if not funnier than the office in parks and rec I've told you at least four times that I've seen the first three seasons of it. You have to continue watching. And you completely forget that. No, but... I chose to stop watching it because I thought it got dumb. It, but it, it gets better, though. And just like re-watching Parks and Rec and The Office and watching the variations of them, there's stuff that was either background or ambient at the time and you missed that joke or you fell asleep. I didn't start falling asleep during episodes until I met you. Sure. Well, okay, Andre Brower, Captain Holt. Rules don't apply. You're not anybody in that show. What? No. Okay. Yes, I am. You're not? Yes, I am. You want to be, but you're not. Sure. Then how about this? 
Just like you want to be Jim Halpert, but you're not. I am totally Jim. I am Jim. See? He's I'm, not. I'm but Jim. He wants I'm Jim. to be. I'm Jim. I'm Jim. If you were, I would <laughs> give you that credit. No, but you, you're not. No, you wouldn't because and kind. You think that it would, I would you think it would praise would, you for being sweet and you, kind. You think it would it would inflate my ego. Yeah. You're like, if I say anything nice to him, he's gonna say it forever and he's gonna latch onto it. Yeah. I know you. I know you if you were sweet and kind, I would praise you for being sweet and kind, okay. but you're not. So before before I switch this over, because I the next prompt for you, ADD moment. And I'm getting blown up by a client. Uh, they've got five minutes. They'll be okay. Let me just switch it over then. You, any movie, TV show, rattle off, I don't know, three to five. And why I am or am not that person. I cannot do that. You made me drink wine. You, you can do it. You no, I cannot. I have zero cognitive ability currently. Okay, then we'll go back to my questioning of you, my grilling of you. Mm-hmm. Creed, Michael Scott. Yes, yes. You live in your own world and everybody else is just around you. Oscar. You have to prove everybody wrong and you are right in every situation. The HR guy that I can't think of his name because everybody hates him. Kind of like how all of your friends are in your mind your friends, but really they're not. I don't care who are my friends or not. I'm just nice to everybody. How they respond is not my problem. I can't remember his name either. We're still here. We're just both staring off into space. He made me drink wine, guys. Didn't make you. Yeah. You were like, on this episode, you're not drinking tea. You're drinking wine. I didn't hold you at gunpoint. I didn't shove it down your throat. That's an antique. It's literally 140 it's years old. In the shot. It's a it's 140 years old. The breach doesn't close. It would explode before it would fire a shell. Oh, now you tell me. You thought that was for self defense. I don't know. No, that's a family heirloom. Look at this. No. That's been passed down. That hangs on a wall. It's not hanging anywhere here. Yeah, right now. But. It's literally in the corner. That would kill you if you were the shooter. That would kill you. It won't be. Okay. Yeah. Don't use it, please. Do you even know how to open the breach? No. Okay. Okay. All right. I was never going to even touch it. Okay. You're the one who just picked it up. It's. You know, you want to know something funny about inflation and all that kind of stuff? It's worth as much today as it was worth when it was new. It was expensive when it was new, and it's worthless now. Basically, the dime for dime, penny for penny, same dollar amount. Like, think, imagine if you bought your phone and then went to sell it 100 years later and it was still $1,000. How much was it then? Like eight dollars and fifty cents? I don't remember. I looked it up at one point because I was curious. Because I just I didn't know. I didn't know other than that, you know, my my great grandpa gave it to my dad's dad, who gave it to my dad, who gave it to me. That was the extent of my knowledge. I don't know if it was ever even used. It's not in the best condition. It's rusted. Surface rust. It's not like pitting or anything like that. Surface rust on the barrel and the wood components are called the furniture. It's in about probably the same condition it was in the late 1800s. So anyways. So anyways. Any other characters before we sign off? I can't think of any off the top of my head because you made me drink wine. You know what I think this podcast is? I think this is our relationship therapy. Camera's been on you this whole time. You know why I think that? You leave the set and continue your day happier than you were before we started recording each time. Getting things off my chest. The same as just getting things off your chest. We talk about stuff that's completely unrelated to anything in our life. And you always leave the set happier than we... So Because you've spoken to me for a whole hour in a non-degrading way. I speak to you like this. Oh, and my time. client is calling me, so... I think our time is up. I love the last name. I I love the last name. Aristocratic. Chug some water and call them back. Hold on. Don't get ahead of yourself. Thank you for being here for this experimental podcast. (laughs) 
that he made me drink wine in the middle of the day la, la, while la, I'm la. supposed to be working. Hopefully, running it through my programs to remove the dead air and stuff isn't going to mess with the intro and outro because there's no speaking on the intro and outro. So we'll see. At this moment, we are at an hour and one minute. Yeah. So we'll see how much that cuts down. Tell us in the comments. All right. I love you, Nona. I love you, too. Do you? <laughs> Does she? I need she? to get back to work. Okay. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.